Hey, what's up guys? This is Skyforce95 here with a review of New Trends Airbender 3.0 Bluetooth keyboard case for the iPad Air and Air 2. I'd like to first point out that I got this for free for review purposes and I promise to give my unbiased and honest review. Now, if you haven't already, make sure to check out my unboxing video. The link to that video will be in the description. I would like to start out by saying that I did buy the very first iteration of this case for my iPad 3rd generation and honestly I did not like it at all. But I am happy to report that this version has pretty much solved all of my complaints for the iPad Air and Air 2. First let's talk about the design. It has a matte plastic black finish with fake metallic accents. The design reminds me of something a little bit more futuristic, which makes sense given the Airbender name. It also makes your iPad a little bit more business-like, which is good if you don't want your iPad to seem childish or anything like that. Since this is a full body case, it is rugged and a little bit on the heavier side. The weight distribution is pretty even, but since the iPad is heavier than the keyboard itself, it will be slightly top heavy, making typing on the lap a little bit less enjoyable. But overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the weight distribution. The hinge is metallic. At first, I thought it was plastic, but now that I have come to a further a perusal, it's definitely metallic, which is good since it's the most prone place to get cracked, so it's much more sturdy compared to the over version, which was plastic. It is much sturdier now. I have a lot of good things to say about this hinge. It's not as floppy, so it actually supports more multi-angles. The rubber bits on the bottom and between the iPad and the case itself does a good job of providing grip as well as separation. The back cover portion that is touching the iPad is has plenty of cutouts for each port and button so all the ports are unhindered and each button is accessible even though the cutouts are not the most precise however this may be due to the fact that this was uh, after marketed towards the ipad air 2 which is what i have the ipad air 2 is slightly thinner than the original which is may account for why the case does not fit so precisely doing so of course makes the back cover not as uh, flush with the iPad, which kind of irks me just slightly, but it's not the biggest of deals. The back cover portion now has a plastic film over it that allows you to see the Apple logo clearly, but prevents scratches since it is protected. Now let's talk about the features. This case is packed with features, if you cannot tell already from the pictures. It can be used as a laptop when all pieces are connected. The hinge design allows rotation and use for in landscape and portrait mode. However, the, s the hinge can also slide out completely to set the iPad up for movie watching or simply displaying it a distance away from the keyboard. The hinge has been greatly improved, as I mentioned before, to support more angles and is able to hold its place much better. The first and last notch on the case requires you to pull a switch but afterwards it can slide in or out with just a bit of force. This force is uh, varied which is good which means that it's not as before it was so easy to push back in which was a great annoyance to me and I am referring back to the my review of the original version. If you want to check out that video the link will again be in the description. So let's go back to talking about the hinge of this. Now the, the hinge also can be completely detached from the back cover and you can again use the iPad as just a tablet. So that pretty much sums up the case. Now let's go more in detail about the keyboard. After all, that is the main attraction for this case. I would like to say that it is a joy to type on this keyboard. Key travel is very good for such a th key, uh, thin keyboard like this, and my fingers do not feel cramped at all even though this is not a full-size keyboard. It supports all the keyboard shortcuts found on the Mac, such as Command-C for copying, changing keyboard languages, etc. On the top row, there are dedicated iPad buttons such as the Home button, Brightness controls, Cut, Copy, Paste, Playback controls, and Lock screen. I do kind of wish that they included other buttons in place of the cut, copy, and paste since you can already do those functions using keyboard shortcuts. Also, I find it a little bit strange that in order to use the lock button, you have to press the function key as well. I have never accidentally hit the lock key when I didn't want to, so I think that function key is a little bit unnecessary. 
Near where the iPad sits in the little ditch is the on-off switch, the Bluetooth connect button, as well as several various indicators. There's one for caps lock, charging, and Bluetooth, which is very nice and I greatly appreciate such features. As with all Bluetooth keyboards, or at least the ones I have used, the autocorrect feature is non-existent as this is a software feature. Bluetooth connects smoothly and automatically once you set it up the first time. The keyboard is actually able to save battery by turning it off when there is a delay of use. If you are idle for a period of time, it will lose the Bluetooth connection. But once you press the key again, it will automatically connect, which is very helpful. Battery life on this thing is amazing. Depending on your use, you'll probably only charge it on average once a month. There is one thing that slightly irks me, and that is this little rubber flap that keeps the case closed. I find this an, a rather unnecessary feature since the case does not tend to open on its own anyways, and sometimes the little flap gets in the way of my typing. Otherwise, all features present are quite fantastic. And just like Apple's smart cover, it has a magnetic strip at the bottom of the keyboard that allows your iPad to go to sleep once you close it and automatically wakes it up when you open it. Finally, let's discuss the value. This product retails for $37 on Amazon as of this review. I think this is definitely a pretty reasonable price for what it provides for such a functional Bluetooth keyboard case. Of course, other keyboard cases around this range are different and have very different uses and are suited for different kinds of people. They have uh, magnetic keyboard covers, like the one I reviewed before, the Shark Bluetooth keyboard case, uh, cover rather, and the folio case, which is, I guess, meant for more business type people, but I personally see no point of having. So let's go ahead and just sum up what I think. I have to say I'm thoroughly impressed with this case and the major improvements over its predecessor. If you want to use your iPad as a productivity device, an extra monitor, and a tablet, then this is the perfect case for you. I personally really like the business and futuristic-like style. Of course, this may not be for everyone. It does offer full protection, however, at the price of, of course, weight. If you are looking for simply a Bluetooth keyboard case that is light and compatible with your iPad, I would look towards a magnetic keyboard cover style. But for under $40, if you like these features that I have demonstrated, I think this is a great buy. If Nutrient were to release the exact same case, but with an added feature, I would love to see some backlighting in this case, which I definitely think is possible, given that my Shark keyboard uh, cover was also backlit with several colors. You can check out that review, again, will be in the description. So I would totally recommend this if you're looking for this kind of keyboard case. So go ahead and give this review a like if you found it helpful, subscribe for more videos like this, and thank you for watching. <music>